So here's Mike. He bought his house with an NFT. It was just recently exposed as a Nazi con. Maybe he'll lose his house. That's what we're looking for today. We want him out of the house. Okay, let's watch Big Mike's brand new house, 14716 California Avenue. Are simply pricing buyers out. Home prices are soaring. I cannot think of a worse time to buy a brand new I house hate right now. Well, whatever. I needed a place to stay and no hyperinflated market or supply shortage was going to stop me from getting my dream home. And besides, at least interest rates were still low. Soaring Oof. interest rates are rates. now making buying nearly impossible. Motherfucker. Well, whatever. I decided I don't care. It's a nice house. Buy a house anyways. So I did whatever any other well-cultured person would do when they were about to buy a home in a tough market. I called Ryan Serhan. I'm in New York right now, but I can connect you. Ryan Serhan, the devil. Really? <laughs> you think Gary V's bad? Ryan Serhan. Have you seen this guy? Throw up a house door for me, Jules. Ryan Serhan. And, you know, I harass this guy every day on Instagram. I'm probably restricted now because I ain't getting any, any likes here or comments. There he is, Ryan Serhan. You've seen this guy. Here, I'll zoom in. Just on imagine phone. if the Oppenheim mm. brothers were tall. That's imagine if the Oppenheim brothers conjoined and grew as one. <laughs> That's Ryan Serhan. Let's see. Here, I got some Serhan media for you. Let's pull him up. The devil. Please har harass this guy. Here he is. He's expanding. This week is insane. Ooh. This vlog tracks this entire full week of complete insanity. Where Trevor, you know, this is a guy like Tim Dillon looks up to. He would love to have a lunch with him or something like that. <laughs> he would die. He would die to have a lunch with this. This is what Tim Dillon's doing every day. While I'm watching Tim Dillon, Tim Dillon's watching this. And <laughs> hey, maybe we can meet up, have a lunch. <laughs> Ryan Sherhan, you could tell he's bad because of the bracelets. He's one of these businessmen, but he wears a thousand bracelets to show that he's David Duchovny or something like that. What it, the guys with the bracelets? That's how you know who who's bad. So here he is. Look at this guy. States, animals, people, influencers, ridiculousness, real estate, everything. Ooh. It all started in Soho. In he New never York. sees his kids. <laughs> he never, you know, he goes out. He has two kids. This is a guy who's home for maybe 45 minutes a day, you know, to eat the takeout and go to bed. That's it. What business do you have having two kids, leaving them all alone? He needs to make money. His thing is, you know, uh, make as much money as you can. He's a motivational speaker now to people. Influencers, business, influence. sales, business, infinity sales. pools. And they're all, you know, they've littered L.A.'s hills with these gaudy glass structures everywhere. You know, thank God. You hear Joe Rogan complain. Oh, man, in L.A., they make you get a permit just to build a dog house. Could you imagine if they didn't? Make you get permits. <laughs> what these lunatics would do to the hills. Look. York City. Look. L.A. would be like Tokyo. It would be like uh, Hong Kong with glass. You know, they love using <laughs> glass instead of a, a nice fence. They use glass everywhere. You shouldn't be building that much glass. So imagine if they didn't need permits to build in L.A. You think these people would have backyards? I mean, really, it would be like there would be smoke. It would look like that scene in that video game you were playing where it's in the future. And Don't everything. tell anyone I play video games. What's the please? game called? Tell everybody they're going to love it. Um, tell everybody they're going to laugh. Horizon Forbidden. Horizon West. Forbidden. <laughs> you know, it's just Secret. like it's just like handguns and weapons. Um, <laughs> video games to me. I'm not into video games at all. I find them to be horrendously disgusting, but I still got to have the PS5. I still, have to, I still have to own it, okay? Um, here's Ryan Serhant very quickly. He'll show you his deal. We do these masterminds about once a quarter, but with the summer months, it gets a little bit funky. So Ooh. our first mastermind of the year was only two months ago. Time flies when you're having fun. Each Ooh, quarter. Ooh, this is friend for him. So Big Mike calls this guy. This guy, king of New York. I mean, this is like the new Trump of New York. 
Um, here is Big Mike. Back to Big Mike. He's talking to that devil on the phone here. And this gets rather wacky. Big Mike seems to not have any money, right? He can't figure out how to put a down payment down on a house. He hasn't been able to rent a place. He's been sleeping in Airbnbs with Salvo Pancakes for the last two and a half years, ever since he got booted out of Logan's little closet when Logan fled to Puerto Rico for that tax savings plan. Here. To, uh, to my girl that's in L.A. She'll take care of you. So now enters Michelle Lally. This woman Ooh, Michelle. She had a heart of gold, <laughs> but she was still liable to eat a listing agent's soul for breakfast. Michelle was the Ooh. real. We looked at house after house after house. Glass. After house. Some of the houses were fucking sick. Look at that. It's got like a nice little water. Not sick. It's like sun. Ooh, I, I despise those squares that all the YouTubers have in their backyard. I hate Have you ever seen squares. the squares? So they put a bunch of fake grass and then they have these cement squares everywhere. Did you see that? And then it makes your whole yard into like a shitty looking chessboard. Yeah. With fake grass. Here, look. House Clean it. after house after house. After house, Show the squares. Some of the houses were fucking sick. Look at that. It's got like yeah, the squares. See those squares? I am not a fan of these squares. Rip them out. Whatever Call your happened? landscaper. Rip them out. Whatever happened to a nice deck? You see one of these house tours decks. with a beautiful wood deck, and you're like, remember oh my god, wood remember decks? decking? I so love a better. wood deck. It reminds you of like a Fourth of July family thing. But no, they need squares. That's how you can tell who's a real asshole. If they've got fake sod in squares. Okay, that's something Daisy Keach would do to the content house called Hype House. Wait, which one was her club house? Of yes, course. Yes, yeah. of course. Disgusting. The original club like a nice house. Little waterfall. Yeah. There's like sunroom right next to the shower like that. Some of them had some issues. It's Whoa. W Jordan. You got it at Home Depot. Stop. And after seeing like a million houses, I finally found one that had everything I'd ever dreamed of. This is a real fucking deal theater, bro. This is actually dope. By the it's way, every person, did you ever watch these house tours and see how terrible these movie theaters are? I've seen like one good in home movie theater in my whole life. Chloe right? Kardashian. Chloe Kardashian. Wall to wall screen. You go into some of these movie theaters, the screen is this big. You go, guys! Defeats the purpose of this theater. Okay, so let's go back. He's going to show you how he bought the house. This is where it gets sticky. Put an aggressive offer in, and like a week later, I got a call back from my realtor. I just spoke to the agent. They got so many offers, and your offer was accepted. What? Woo! <laughs> Fucking go! And just like that, I was in escrow let's on go. my very... So he planned this whole thing. He planned that. Instead of coming up with, like, content to entertain you, he only comes up with content that entertains me. Him buying his house. And look, he's been filming this for six months as if it's Jeff Wittick's eye documentary. You know? <laughs> six months to show you how, look, I bought a house. Wonderful. So did my dad. You know? I'm not watching my dad on DVD. Here. First home. <laughs> Except... Not all movies have fairy tale endings. Whoa. So I just got the inspection report back for the house. It's completely fucked. It's quite literally falling apart. The foundation is falling apart. There's rat feces. There's everything you could ever imagine. Insects. We're out. We're backing out. It's over. And just like that, we were back on the road, and the market yes. had gotten so bad, I even had to go to some of my friends who had pocket listings <sighs> or houses that weren't even done yet. And, dude, I looked at so many fucking houses and got so frustrated with the process that I didn't even want to buy a house anymore. And so I decided instead of buying a house, I'm just going to buy a really, really expensive NFT, and you guys probably remember Ooh. I dropped 715000 So there it is. And here's the question today after seeing that Bored Ape Yacht Club documentary. Did Mike even buy this NFT? For seven hundred thousand dollars. I'm not sure. Or was he given this NFT and he makes this whole video about how I was able to buy a house with an NFT? No one's talking about this yet, by the way. He makes a video. Oh, I was able to buy a house with a bored ape NFT. Now he's claimed that he bought this NFT for seven hundred thousand dollars, but now we see the bored ape doc. They're claiming that they gave these NFTs to these celebrities, and the celebrities are lying, signing NDAs so they can't talk. But it would rule if every other celebrity got their board ape for free, and the only person stupid yes. enough to actually pay that price was, was Big, Big Mike. Mike. Yeah, that would be incredible. Whoa, okay. 
But um, it's either that or if all the celebrities got them for free, then they're kind of conning the people in, into pretending these have some sort of value, which Maybe they can't. Maybe the whole plan behind this NFT was some deal he made so that he could show people you could get a house. Yep, with that's it, what I'm that's saying. The whole story. I, I after seeing that documentary, which that's why I want everybody to see it. It, it would make perfect sense for the board ape guys to go up to Big Mike and go, "We want to take this a little bit further and show people how you could use an NFT as a down payment on a house." Because a lot of people can't get houses right now. A lot of people can't get approved. What if they could use an NFT to get a house? That's a new selling point for all these kids, right? Who can't get houses, frustrated guys like Big Mike, who want to live large but can't. So, yeah, they certainly could have paid Big Mike to, 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 to run this story. And Big Mike signs an NDA, he thinks it's all good. But meanwhile, Big Mike is on impulsive going, yeah, crypto, it's just pretty shady. You should stay away from it. Not good. And you're going, what's going on? Like, it's really getting kooky. On impulsive, they talk about, you know, Logo and be like, it's such a shame that people made NFTs a scam and people who do these rogue. It's like, you and Brother Jake are the only one. You're the leaders. <laughs> all right, let's see some more. Dollars this on is a getting sounding worse and worse. I never looked back. Yeah, I know. That is so much fucking money. And then literally like the next day, Michelle called me and she said there was this house that I just had to see. And she was right. And you know, if I know anything about content creators, it's they don't put in any, they don't really put in passion unless it's an ad. You know, you'll watch Tim Dillon show and he's half asleep. Guess where he's the most excited? When it's ad read time. All the shows, you notice this? Watch your next podcast. They've got no energy while they're doing the show, but when it's every time, oh, Ethan's sitting up. The jokes are flowing. It's their funniest bit. The ad read is where they put their most effort into now. You know, that's where you're going to see them. And Big Mike, this video, you know, your normal videos aren't this banging. This seems like it could be a promotion. Yikes. And whatever happened to, I was talking to Salvo Pancakes the other day. You know him? Whatever happened to, you need to, uh, you know, uh, tell people when you're running an ad. Remember that? You needed to say uh, hashtag ad or something. It was the, the FIDC. <laughs> what was the company? They said there, there would be big fines for influencers that don't reveal they're doing an ad. Remember that? Have they ever fined anyone? I mean, no. let's get to work. That just reminded me that Biden is trying to take away Dasha's jewel. That really drove me nuts. That's another reason why I'm all somber today. I couldn't believe that. We got to talk about that. That They just banned jewel, the brand, they, these things, the puffas. Oh. They banned them completely. I stocked up this morning just in case. And I, I don't think it's I'm funny. Do. I don't think that's funny. I think I'm red pilled now, Robin Tran. Watch out. All right, let's go back to Big Mike, but remind me about the jewel stuff here. It was even better than the first one. And so I put in another aggressive offer, and a week later, I got a call back that was filmed by this girl in a hotel room at F1 Miami. Our offer has been accepted. Wow. Wow. Look at this. He's filming his acceptance stuff. He's running around a hotel room having his buddies film him while the woman on the phone tells, I think this one's going to go through. Why are you filming this? So now it's time to work because we gotta go quick. And just like that, Oof, I'm back we in gotta Asheville. go All quick. All I had to do was make a down payment of 1.2 million dollars in cash, and the house was yeah. mine. There was just one problem. I didn't have 1.2 million dollars in uninvested cash on the sidelines. Why don't you have 1.2 million dollars by now? That's that's shady. You've been Logan Paul's assistant on the main stage for the last six years. You said you had the number one selling book on Amazon under drugs and disorders and creeps. You said that you had one of the, uh, you know, uh, top viewed vlogs. You're getting these brand deals left and right. How does he not have $1.2 million in the bank by now? Seems rather easy and to get. He's always talking about how he saves money, like yeah, crazy. that he doesn't he spend has a scarcity complex. So up until now, he's had no house. He's got one car. He 
definitely doesn't dress well. I mean, he's buying like the $30 shirts from IG ads. And he wears the shit out of them. He wears them every day. <laughs> every day he's in a training day gown. <laughs> He wears the L.A. hat. That can't be more than, uh, you know, $28 at Lids. I invested in a Lids, by the way. I'm starting to, if you ever see me, come down. I uh, If you ever come down to Palm Springs, California, come to the Lids <laughs> on that main street that we've got here. And um, I I opened a Lids. I did. I finally did it. I opened I opened a Lids. <laughs> so come on down. Um He's, so he's not spending any money. He doesn't have a studio. He doesn't have a house. He doesn't have any cool hobbies. By the way, you know, he's one of those guys. If he's going to buy something, you're going to see it. Okay? Anything he buys over $7 is on tape. It's on Twitter. It's on Instagram. It's on his story. It's on his late night Q&A. He's going to show you every item he has. So he's been bragging about how rich he is. And we've been watching him kind of get... I mean, he should be rich. Right? He's Logan Paul's best friend. Logan Paul has 20 million subscribers. I mean, I know if Tim Dillon's rich, he should be rich. But you don't have the $1.2 million. So he needed to do this. There was just one problem. I didn't have $1.2 million in uninvested cash on the sidelines because... Yeah, I know. so much fucking money. So now we had an issue. This really was my dream home, but I didn't want to sell the AP either because I just made such a big deal about buying it. And I really liked the furry little fucker. Here's where things get interesting. Through some mutual friends, I got connected to a company called Arcade that specializes in NFT-backed loans. So Write that down. Like I would lock my board Ape NFT into Okay, Arc this is where you know... Ad. <laughs> this is where you know that we're entering ad territory, okay? They've made animations of board him. apes, <laughs> cutouts, stealing clips, and cutting things out. So here he goes. She's laying down the whole scheme. Why? Maybe so that you would invest in one of the board ape you NFTs. You could be getting a $5 million home. Dollar house. Yeah. All of you out there could be getting your own home with a little digital picture. That you buy from us. Me and Logan sell digital pictures. What do you know? Me and brother Jake sell digital pictures that you could buy houses with. <laughs> and what did Gary V say? Didn't Gary V say that he his goal was so that you could use NFTs to buy all these crazy things? Houses, boats, cars. That's his dream. I'm telling you, this is like, it's almost too advanced of a scheme to even be covered on Red Bar. To be we need coffee Zilla I never this. knew they were going to get this crazy. And yeah, you should watch Coffee uh, Zilla in between times. That's a good one to watch in between Red Bar to keep up. I told them, I'll make fun of the people. You show them the evidence and factual smarts information, okay? And then the people will be very yeah, fulfilled. You know? Yeah. All right, so let's continue on. Big Mike. NFT the beginning of a long was. summer. So the deal went like this. I would lock my board Ape NFT into Arcade's protocol. They would then give me a loan of USD coin against it. I could then convert that USD coin into American dollars to help pay my down payment. On my Look at all those mortgage. steps. They would hold on to my NFT until I was able to repay the loan, and then I would get the Ape back. This was perfect, and just like that, the problem was solved, and I was about to be the first person. Okay, that sounds really... All that stuff. Did you hear all that stuff really quick? And look how quickly he says it. It's simple. A house. A house. That's all you need to know. I don't even like doing that task on my uh, bank app where it transfers a little bit of money into the savings account. That's already too many clicks. <laughs> Look at all these clicks. Backed loans. So the deal went like this. I would lock my board Ape NFT into Arcade's protocol. They would then give me a loan of USD coin against it. I could then convert that USD coin into American dollars to help pay my down payment on my USD traditional board. Coin? They would hold on to my USD NFT coin. until I was able to repay the loan, and then I would get the Ape back. This was perfect, and just like that, the problem was solved. That's how my dad bought our first house, too. Very similar to that. A lot of handing off and money until you, you can't know, tell who's scheme. got... Big Mike wasn't really that into NFTs this whole time. You so remember? Like, he was always kind of He was always talking about how he didn't bit. get NFTs, that they weren't a good deal. And now all of a sudden he can't let go of this ape even for a house. He just has to trade it into this loan company because he just can't bear to sell it. Very strange like stuff going on. I mean, this is all getting really weird. I was about to be the first person to ever leverage an NFT to buy a fucking house. They were about to make the transfer. 
when the unimaginable happened. Bitcoin is down more than 50% from the high. It's investors getting jolted by volatility rippling through the crypto world. Crypto obviously right now getting crushed. Motherfucker, who is throwing all- You know who was the first person to get into crypto that we knew? Patrick C. Melman. Yeah. Coin sitter this. When Bitcoin first came out, guess who was into it? Patrick Melton. He developed an entirely different side personality <laughs> and did a show called Coin Sitter This, where he just talked about Bitcoin. Do you remember that? Coin Sitter This. Yeah. Red Bar. What did I call it? Coin Sitter That. Red Bar's number one fool, Patrick Melton, was big into crypto. These are the guys that are into crypto. How is it that our biggest fools of all time all really love crypto? You know, very strange how this all happened. All these fucking curveballs. So yeah, the go. crypto and NFT market shit the fucking bed. But because apes were such a strong project, I was still able to make the loan happen. And so I had the ape appraised at today's value and was able to pull it. To Look at that. So the whole crypto market crashes. It's not worth anything except bored ape. Okay. Because did you hear what he said? The bored ape, of course, stood the test of time. Interesting. Especially after seeing the board and going, no, okay, watch. Yeah, the crypto and NFT market shit the fucking bed, but because apes were such a strong project, I was still able to make the loan. Wow, apes are such a strong project, not like Logan Paul's two project that we got <laughs> cooking on the side here. Apes, so strong, you could still use them to buy a house during the crypto crash. Pretty cool. You don't think that that's not all by design? You think the big Mike just happens to say all this stuff? This is really cool, actually, that this is happening. This is bigger than busting him lying about what happened in his book, which did happen. There were a lot of lies in that first book about heroin. So there it is. Uh, Bored Ape. They're the ones that could, you know, uh, they'll withstand the apocalypse. Invest in them. Okay. But because apes were such a strong project, I was still able to make the loan happen. And so I had the ape appraised at today's value and was able to pull a $200,000 USDC loan against it, which was enough to scrape together the $1.2 million down payment to secure my mortgage and the keys to my dream home. And that leads us to today. You are now looking at... Wait, 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 wait. He only needed a $200,000 down payment? Is that what he's saying? Or $1.2 million? Did he? I thought he needed $1.2 million okay, at the on. beginning. I, sorry, I might have misheard. Let me see. Happened. And so I had the ape appraised at today's value and was able to pull a $200,000 USDC 200, loan against it, which was enough to scrape together the $1.2 okay. million dollar down payment to secure my mortgage. And That's so weird, though. You did all that work just for another $200,000 that you needed for the $1.2 million down payment? Surely Logan could have given you this money. Why make you go through... Ooh. Why make you go through a hundred little hoops unless this was a bored ape ad? And the keys to my dream home, and that leads us to today. You are now looking at the very first home. Here we go. The night shift. There's that glass I was trying. Oh, squares and glass. Squares, squares, squares. I got squares, glass, fake everywhere. I live here at the hills, yo. Completely open floor plan. It's been my dream to have a house like this ever since I moved to California. Kitchen, marble countertops. Love the white oak floors with this like brownish wood. That stupid ass material. Shirt. I don't know what it's called exactly. <laughs> so Get that shirt off. <laughs> take that hat off. And that that's one of the, you know what? That kind of hat you take off when you go into somebody's home. A high hat like that, L.A., that's a threat. That neck is tight. Those L.A. hats. Yeesh. I got a nice hat. I'll show people. I got a nice hat to show you later. Sub-Zero refrigerator, obviously super, super, super top of the line. And then flows right into the living room. Um, obviously, there's going to be a huge-ass couch here so everybody can sit, watch movies. Electric and the house fire comes fire. fully. It's still fully uh, set decorated for the sale. What do they call that? Staged. Why is it staged right now? Why is he in there? And there's another. Furnished, I'm sure. Well, no, I don't think so. There's another weird part coming. It here's a wild accusation, okay? <laughs> here's a wild accusation from me. I do not think he bought this house. 
Ooh. There's a couple things. First of all, it is still staged. Okay, but that that happens all the time. We've seen selling Sun Mayor. There's a part coming up where he bangs the door against the wall while he's showing you the closet, and both him and the cameraman freak out as if someone else is going to be mad at them. Interesting. When I'm in my own home, I'm messing it up. I'm banging the walls. I'm punching through the walls right next to Jules's face while she stands <laughs> stiff right next to the, the big hole. But when Big Mike makes a little bang on his wall coming up, him and the videographer, and I think the videographer says something like, dude, she's going to be pissed. Who's she? And why would anybody be pissed besides Big Mike himself? Watch this. How do you turn this thing on? Uh, so it's all true. Oh, wait, the gas is not like electricity and gas. This is like the powder room right here. That's what they call it. I don't know exactly what kind of powdering is going on in here. None going up in my nose. I'll tell you that fucking much. Why not? Piss or shit. Come right in here as soon as you want. You know, what kind of pain medication are you going to take after the hair surgery that Dave Portney described as very painful? <laughs> What are you going to do? Because you're going to have to be on some pain meds, bro. Did you see him? We'll show you pictures. He's got his whole head scalped. You know, he looks like he was in. Um... He's getting his head shaved on the same day his ape was exposed as a Nazi in wow, solidarity. Look at that. Yeah, he's all of a sudden doing this. He's got lines they've drawn all over. If you're letting some nurse draw all over your head with pencil, you she better come in with that. Tiny shot to cut the top off, because that's the only excuse. Um, here he is, and this is the part that's going to be coming up. He's going to be back on these pain meds. He's sniffing coke, allegedly. Walk in the house, you can do that. Guest bedroom number one. I don't know how the layout's going to work yet. Uh, really nice bathroom, blah, blah, so on and so forth. Another bathroom. Why are these always in the staging? No one brushes their back anymore, bro. Look, there's two of them, even. You maybe not, I do. Do you do this? Guys, this one is set up for like children. That, that, that sounds weird. I don't know how to say that without it sounding weird. It's set up for children. Okay. Children want to live here. I, that, I'm getting rid of these. It's not going to be set up for children. It's going to be a full size bed. This is where I'll be I'm a perfect place for Tripoli's sons to live. The Tripoli brothers, the Tripoli brothers. I wrote a song about them again. <laughs> I wrote a song about him again. It will do a little Sam song. Every every uh, episode will end with a <laughs> Sam song. Sing it again. Okay, I will. <laughs> I'm going to be saying, uh, beautiful bathroom, probably put like five, six people in the shower. If you want a cannonball off the bench into a bathtub, you can do that. I'm not saying anybody would want to do that, but if you okay, want to. Okay, here it comes. Part where they're going to mess up the wall. He's in his sinks because I don't have a girlfriend, but maybe now that I have a house, who knows? This is great, actually, because the bedroom's like all the way over there. I can close this door if I had Taco Bell. Imagine so showing everybody every square inch of your home. Really? Are you even thinking? Are you even considering anything anymore? You know, do you guys know what my home looks like? Absolutely not. Should we do a tour? Would people like to see a tour of the whole studio in my house and the blueprints to where you could find me? <laughs> here. The night before, or like any of that kind of stuff, I just shit in here with the door closed, nobody will fucking hear it. And of course, another one of these brushes. A full walk-in closet, all your stuff. Oh, here you training go. day, training day, training day shirts. Yeah, this is the part here. Imagine how many training day shirts could fit on those shelves. Well, you need a lot of shelves for those shirts. Those shirts are big. They're like a blanket. So here's where he bumps the little door. And this is just a little one, but it's a wild accusation that I believe in. One of these brushes. A full walk-in closet, all your stuff. There we go. That's just a little tiny bit. little bump, just a tiny little bump of the wall, and then the videographer says this. A full walk-in closet, all your stuff. That's not like wood cracking, man. Oh, fuck. Well, I mean, who, who fucking planned that out, dude? Don't you have to have some sort of fucking guard here? <sighs> I already yeah. fucking broke the house. Just, just don't tell her. <laughs> just don't, don't tell, tell her. her. Just don't tell her. I already broke the house. Big Mike seems shocked again. I, you know, hit the wall a million times this year. I don't get shocked like that. And then the videographer says, just don't tell her. Now, Big Mike starts realizing, uh-oh, 
Tell who and says this. Fucking guard here. Oh, I already sure. fucking broke the house. Just don't tell her. <laughs> Fuck, dude. What do you mean don't tell her? She's not gonna care. I just bought it. This is the mm. best. That was hmm. a cover up. <laughs> cover up. Edition. Cover up. That was a cover up. That was a Josh Denny quick cover up. I think. You know, it's fun to think that it's. Or a he could just be. It could just you know not be fully his yet, and he wanted to do the tour first. You know, that's the boring version. But the wild accusation version is just ain't house ain't his. It's leased. It's leased. You know, like the Lambo lie that we caught him and Lana in. <laughs> Fuck, dude. What do you mean? Don't tell her. She's not gonna care. I just bought it. This is the best part of the house. Send me I those scalp pics. I'll show them next. This is how I sleep. Like I'm fucking a skeleton, a mummy, right? <sighs> and the first thing that I look at is this fucking view, dude. I saw bigger houses, houses with movie theaters in them, but that fucking view, bro, with the pool, it's just. She's already worried that people are going to think it's big enough. That's where his head's at. Ah, uh, this is a small one. Uh oh, they're going to hang. This is what he's thinking about. This is, this is exciting. Inside this glass box is a room that... Oh, this is bad. Here, here, this is exactly what I'm talking about. The podcasters, the entertainers of the world, they buy the $4 million house. Look where the studio is. $4 million house, but the studio is in... This is exciting. Inside this glass box. Look how small is this is. This is a room that will become. This is like a 10 by 11 room. And what's it going to become? The LA headquarters for Impulsive. Backdrop, couches. Backdrop, couches. Once he gets to 375, it's going to be insane. Um, this is where Impulsive will now be shot from. Two millionaires living in million dollar homes, but a 10 by 10 Mersh style living <laughs> space for the entire podcast. So we're getting three guys in here, a couch, a backdrop, cameras. That's going to be nice. What a comfortable space. Camera people, really cool glass doors. We can put one of those things that says like on air right here. So when people come by, they know not to come in because we're shooting. And then you're back up in the main <laughs> space. Cool. This is a fully climate controlled um, like wine closet or whatever it's called but once again i didn't set up the staging there's a fencing mask or helmet in here. you know this is a pinned video one of andrew schultz's favorite videos of all time this video <laughs> he loves this this is just dude you got a wine cellar <laughs> he loves this fucking video I don't know exactly what that has to do with. You would catch fresh honey or something. Yeah, you could. Yeah, or like a bee mat. I don't know. I don't know what the fuck that is. Anyways, garage, uh, laundry room, all that shit's on that side. I could talk about this shit all day. The cell for the house is right here. You got this pool, hot tub that could fit, you know, maybe like. He likes a tight collar too. They're all wearing tight collars that go out like this. You know, like the uh, hairdresser cape. I was going to wear a hairdresser tight. cape for the show today. We were thinking of doing a gag where I start the show where I'm laying back in a hairdresser's sink and Jules is sudsing my hair and then I pop up, you know, <laughs> didn't see you guys there. Sorry, I was just it's getting a good my... idea, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he likes these tight shirts. They billow out. He's got the high hat. He's got the Drake Abraham. Not a good look. Eight or ten people. If you guys are watching this and your and your fans, maybe drop in the comments below that you want to come in the hot tub. Maybe we have some people come out and go in the hot tub. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, dude. So you see what they lie about too when they know they're guilty. The podcaster, the entertainer, the comedian, the influencer. You notice when they're really bragging and and they know this is a little much. They start going, "Oh yeah, in the hot tub here. Look at the hot tub. It could. You know what? Maybe the fans will come over. I'll have fans over. See, this is about you too." It's not just about me. So, yeah, you're, where you can have the fans over in your hot tub. Yeah, right. You felt guilty showing them all these riches, huh? Like, we really did it. The first time I came to California was in 2016. I fell in love with this state. You guys know my whole story, especially yeah, you guys that read the book. Dude, I never thought I was going to have an apartment. I never thought I was going to have anything, bro. Like, I, I was 400 credit score, in debt, no money, nothing, no college education. Yeah. And... Like, just 
Sad. Put my foot on the fucking gas, dude. And obviously a great network and Logan and Lana, oh, all those yeah, people yeah. that were there to help and support. But just put my fucking foot on the gas, bro, and worked every day. I mean, you guys have watched the channel for the past three years. I mean, he was selling beanbag. You were just selling beanbags before you met Logan. So it's, it's really just because you met Logan Paul. Same lottery ticket that Tony Hinchcliffe won by knowing Joe Rogan. So look at this. Big Mike is finally getting his hair transplanted. I didn't know this was something people were comfortable admitting. It's a new thing. Yeah, because you know why it's a new thing? Because he's going to get caught. And God forbid you get caught. So now you just admit the horrible things you're going to do, which they think is somehow better than getting caught. I guess it's a little better, but... Uh, it says, oh, you know what? I'm banned from Big Mike. You got to go in there and get screenshots. Oh, I'll send them to you. He's blocked me. Let me see if I can switch over. You can click the oh, BBG post. Oh, I can. Post. Look, wait, wait, wait. Switch accounts. Uh-oh. Just Log click in. the BBG post and there's already screenshots. Right. Uh, Big Mike, he's getting full hair surgery in, like, Bolivia. Like, he went overseas to get this, this done because they won't do it here. It's too risky. So it's similar to, like, a Jordan Peterson-style... Uh, thing here let me show you this hold on i gotta make sure we're not exposing anything bad yeah look at this here he is big mike getting his hair holy fuck dude they're drawn on him they've shaved him completely they got oh wait 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 he's being blocked a little bit there how's that how's his smile there oh, wearing a hospital gown that's a nice gown so he's yeah it's it's almost it's too much it's like reading Josh Denny's tweets it's it's gone past the point of I can't even believe it anymore to the point of I don't even know what to say so kind of says, speaks for itself Mike did buy the house on June 8th for 4.1 mil but guess what someone else was about to buy it in March for 3.7 so why did he suddenly pay so much more for it Oh of course well um I think Graham Stevens is going to tell us a little bit about that. Do we have the Graham Stevens clip? Wasn't Big Mike covered by Grum Stefan? Have you ever seen Graham? I saw Graham in the background of Selling Sunset. I almost uh, spit out my drink. <laughs> uh, let's see the other pics here. Ooh, we got a little close-up. Wait, so he's sitting here in his boxer shorts? Look at that little thing. It's a triangle. Pink, tr black triangle on his shorts. Hold on. See the little triangle jewels right Whoa. there? It's a nice try. Nice try. <laughs> um, so he's sitting there in his little boxers, in his triangle out. Where's the one where they're like completely scalping? I him? sent you uh, his story in a text. Mm. Okay, here we go. Did it pop up? Oh, wow. Yeah, look at this. So he's looking like, uh, who's that guy? Fushi Tube. Can oh, you show her a picture of Drake and see if she'll do the same like thing where his... Like yeah, I need You're to shaving go like, him. Go to like a one here, then like a half, and like really blend it. I don't. In. I don't think that's what she does. Damn, dude. So I don't look like Vin Diesel. I didn't see any of this yet. I see Greg Paul coming out. Greg Paul. <laughs> uh oh. Okay. Uh, let's see the other one. I want to see. Wasn't there one picture where he's looking really scabbed up? I guess that was it. No, that's fine. So, did we have a time code for Sir Han or for this uh, or this Graham Stefan video here? Welcome back to the Graham Stefan Show. Yeah, so is. today we got a really interesting episode because Mike Malak from the Logan Paul and Pulsa podcast bought a four point one million dollar house with an NFT. So as a real estate agent and real estate, have you ever seen this little guy? He couldn't be taller than this. Oh, I think he was on the. Ethan Klein, I dub celebrity boxing match. The creator class. Oh, God. You know, I wish dementia. I hope that woman's dad's Alzheimer's puts him in the ground. You hear me? What's her name? She does lewds. Have you met I dubs? Do you remember I, I dubs? of them we could play later. I would love to play that. I dubs and his girlfriend, Anissa. Ayahuasca. Yeah, Anissa. Ooh, she couldn't be more lewd. <laughs> And they had a celebrity boxing match. All the profits you could cut through. All the profits went to uh, my daddy suffering from Alzheimer's. Oh, isn't it hard? Who the fuck cares? Your dad can't remember. He probably got the disease to block out them lewds. <laughs> it just makes me sick in the way that they were taking that YouTuber boxing match so seriously. We've got a Ugh. clip we'll show you. I-dubs in uh, aerosol. 
They kept talking about, oh, we want to make sure this is a positive boxing event where both opponents, they don't want to kill each other. They like each other. So at the end of our matches, you won't see smack talking. You'll see hugs. I mean, what are you, Jeff Ross? Please. <laughs> I want hate. I want these two boxers going at it because one of them hates blacks and the other one hates whites. <laughs> but they want to make it positive. And I think Graham Stefan was on that. And you know, when you box, you have to take your shirt off. This is just what he's... So this guy had no shirt. He was boxing this kid. He was covered in acne. <laughs> Nobody seemed to mind. The whole crowd was cheering for a kid. He's got blood and guts bleeding out of his face. Nobody seemed to mind. Maybe that's why Graham Stefan lost against his child. It was a little tiny kid covered in giant. I mean, the, it was acne on top of acne on top of it. There was smoke coming out of one of them. And you boxed him. You took your shirt off and you wanted to be as close to those pimples as possible. You're sitting on the same set. By the way, these Jason Oppenheim selling sunset guys, they love this aesthetic with the... This big lamp, they love those bars that are shaped in a dome that you open, you know, that's shaped like a giant steampunk egg. They love luxury steampunk. And it's never from like a real brand or a real furniture company. It's always, you know, these maps that they have. They love art like this. Look, it's got money on the art. He hasn't updated his little set or camera in quite some time. So how much... Profit are you making from these homes? Agent. Not cool to be an agent. I harassed a real estate agent that I went to high school with. I couldn't believe it. I was going through my Instagram. You ever go through your Instagram and you find out all your friends are 70 years old and they're just all acting like Jews? I found this girl. <laughs> She's a real estate agent now. And she puts up this video and it's got the text that goes just in case you don't have time to listen. You read the text. Making money and selling your house is a boss move. Don't let your money sit. Put it. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't stomach it. I started making fun of her in an adolescent way. So imagine that some girl from high school who thinks she's all grown up. So proud to be grown up dating some beta Jew with two beta kids with smiles. They could barely talk. They're like Philip DeFranco's kids. Ta ta. What the hop on what? Your kid is 12. <laughs> it needs to know how to talk, Philip. Um, so, yeah, I harassed her on there. I'm sure she's probably restricted me out of fear. But, yeah, I recommend that. If you're around 36 years old like me, start going, dig into your high school and start harassing all the people who turned normal. Is okay, that your they first won't believe time? it. Going after someone from your high school? I usually leave them alone. I'll tell you who I leave alone to. Joe Kilgallen. I have to tie my hands together with zip ties to not say, Oh, look at your son. Look at this life you built for you fucking people. <laughs> it really, every time I see comedian Joe Kilgallen or these comedians that used to host Red Bar, now they're just dads who make barely any money and kind of do nothing. You know, he's holding his fucking kid in front of Wrigley Field. Oh, I want to say the worst. Trust me. You know, talk about how, how their kids didn't come out that good and stuff like that. But, um, yeah, this was the first time that I actually let it rip. And I, I've been starting to do that a lot lately. I think I'm just going to try to uh, inform the people. She really hasn't heard anything like that. Your real estate agent lady that you went to high school with, they think life is safe now. They're not expecting to get scolded like that in front of their acquaintances that they've built such a trust with. Uh, so here is Graham Stefan, real estate agent. He's going over. He's going to tell you that Big Mike's house, there's some fishy, funny business going on. Interesting. Graham? Investor myself for over a decade. It's been like 14 <laughs> years now. I'm a little skeptical of how he was able to do this, but I oh. uh, want to give him a chance and watch the video. And then I will give you my own thoughts as... Uh, Someone has been doing this for you know, a decently long time. Look at that Wardellian little photo that he was proud to show. I'll give you my own thoughts as uh, someone has been doing this. Look at that. How do you put that display profile <laughs> pick up there? <laughs> Would you buy a house from a child, a child like this? Well, come on in. 
crawl on in. Let me show you the home. No thanks. I'll take a look around myself. That's really, really startling. I don't like these kid adults, you know. Oh, wow. He works for the Oppenheim group. What? This, look at this. Graham oh Stefan, the Oppenheim group. Interesting enough, Big Mike and Logan did one of their episodes out of the Oppenheim group's office, the one you see on Selling Sunset. That's right. It's all connected here. Drake, Big Mike, Logan, Justin Bieber, crypto, money, the market. Producer Michael might be involved. Sex, lost, videotapes, lost, defiance. <laughs> Uh, so let's, he's got a 5.0 on realtor.com. Seven reviews, bucko. This for, you know, a decently long time. So with that said, guys, if you appreciate the content, it would mean a lot oh, he to drinks me those, subscribe. He drinks those, call oh, subscribe. He drinks cold coffees with cream that he lets just fucking linger in his little den for hours on end. Nothing more disgusting than an iced coffee with cream in it. Subscribe, if you hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And uh, once you do that, we can begin. Boy, oh boy, do I have a story to tell you guys. Through all the... Now he's watching Mike's video. He's got no boxes. content. Every week we look forward to an escape starting with one downright mystical wow. phrase. All right, welcome back to the night. Yeah, so we were to sell the show. Someone Graham's. in the chat says that they probably use people like Graham and the Oppenheims as realtors because they're so small that it makes the houses look, look big. big. Oppenheims, tell me otherwise, guys. I want the two Oppenheims connected to my back that kind of moved with me for Halloween. <laughs> uh, where that's a Burning Man. Hey, it's the Oppenheims. <laughs> but you're driving by so fast on a dirt bike that they, they can't tell if it's fake Oppenheims or the costume Oppenheims. That would be fucking what sick, What about one bro. of those dog Halloween costumes where, like, the dog head comes out and then you put, like, the legs on the dog's two front yeah. arms so it looks like... It's a guy walking, like an Oppenheim costume. You want costume? me to walk two Oppenheims as dogs no, while like they're naked? <laughs> you know, all these guys go to Burning Man as well. I don't want realtors at Burning Man. It's another very weird thing. So, yes, are they hiring shrimpy, tiny, insy, witsy, teeny, beanie, eeny, weeny, body booms? Whoever said that is a genius. To I make the ceiling. So, these ceilings might be, and then, the, you know, how tall you are, you know. Yeah, because a four-foot guy gives you a higher ceiling. That's pretty cool. Okay, so can we fast forward here to the part where he talks about it being sketchy? Yeah, let me see. I think it was kind of like right around here. Um, okay, here. Let's just play this and see where it goes. And Yeah, so board apes have come down to like 86 ETH, so like, yeah, 75 grand for a board ape. Now, I don't know what made Mike Malax different, but uh, to me, Ooh. he could have easily lost 50% on that. I don't know what made Mike's different. He's showing you that these board apes went down. So how was Mike able to use it as leverage for this giant loan? Interesting. Oh, eh, eh, mm, mm, we'll find out. Made Mike Malax different, but uh, to me, he could have easily lost 50% on that, just like so fast. A house is not going to see a 50% decline in a month. It's just not going to happen. Like even in a worst real estate crash, you might lose like 20%. Uh, that was a bad decision, I think, to do NFT over buying a, a real estate property in Los Angeles. I mean, oh, oh. You see what his little placard says on there? Down there, he's got like this little desk placard, which might be a good idea for me. Principal. Okay, <laughs> he's got a little desk placard like the principal would have, but it says, I don't work hard. You don't work hard. That's cool. That's cool. I'm sure your fans appreciate that. You know, that's the new thing, too. They brag about how they barely work or barely put any time in anything while they're on the private jet. Is if the fans at home are excited about that. Now, why would the fans care that you don't work hard and that you make a lot of money off them? You know, they do episode after episode of Impulsivist about how much money they've drained out of the people listening. And the people listening at home are like, this is sick. I, I don't get it. Well, Graham. I know. so much 
fucking money. And then literally like the next day, Michelle called me and she said there was this house. He's watching it now too. Thing, Logan Paul could get away with that because he's got so much money. And for him, it's like, yeah, okay, spending bail. 500 grand on an NFT. That's like the average person spending like $50 on something. It's like, oh yeah, even if it goes to zero, not that big of a deal. But I feel like maybe- You do that everywhere where it asks you what gender you are and it's only got male and female. I make a big stink, <laughs> a big stink. And then I say male, I wink, we shake, we agree. We smile. Okay, watch this. Mike Malak is around so many people who just spend ridiculous amounts of money that for him, it's probably a higher percentage of his net worth than, than if Logan Paul were to do that. So he's, he's playing in these big leagues that uh, he, he just needs so much money to do that. Maybe he has the money. Like if he has, uh, you know, $20 million, $30 million, then I would say, sure, go ahead and speculate 700 grand on an NFT. Yeah, see, that's the weird part too. Big Mike didn't even have $200,000 to finish off his down payment, yet he went out and bought a $700,000 NFT before buying a house. It just seems off, right? It ain't right. I think that Gargamel from the Bored Ape Yacht Club is in cahoot. I don't even want to... If those guys are who they say they are, I don't even want any trouble, bro. <laughs> like, really, I don't want any Too trouble. I will us. walk all this back. If it's true, I don't want the Bored Ape guys after me because they're too smart. So if that is all true, Bored Ape, I'm on your side. I'll start selling them too. <laughs> I don't want any trouble. That's like 10% of his net worth. I think that would be highly irresponsible. It was even better than the first one. And so I put in another aggressive offer and a week later, I got a call back that was filmed by this girl in a hotel room at F1 Miami. Our offer has been accepted. Okay, we wow. saw this, but I just want to hear what Graham wow. says. So now it's time to work because we got to go quick. And just like that, I was back in escrow and all I had to do was make a down payment of $1.2 million in cash. The big down payments. Okay, so let's see. So 4.1 million bucks. We're going to do some math on this. He's putting 30% uh, down on this house. So we're going to do some backwards math here in terms of how much money Mike Malak makes. And uh, I know it sounds kind of oh, like wait, a loser. Dream, I'm sorry. I got to apologize. It says I don't work here. Is black. I don't work here. Twisted. Ooh. And a twist, too. I don't know where to go <laughs> with that. Very cool, Graham. Most lenders in a price point like this would be able to get him approved for, you know, 20% down or maybe even 15% down, depending on his income. But the fact that he has to go in with 30% down means to me that he's he's maxed out what a lender is able to give him on a loan, and therefore he has to come up with more money to bridge that gap. Okay, so in a traditional sense, here's what you would do. You go to a mortgage calculator, you type in $2,870,000 on a 30-year fixed at an interest rate of let's probably say four and a half back then, you come to $14,500 a month. But then you also have property taxes. Now on $4.1 million in Los Angeles, oh, bankroll you're coffee. looking at that's another cool. $5,000 a month in property tax. Yeah, I know it's it's ridiculous, but you know what? That's Los Angeles, so there you go. So now we're basically at $20,000 a month and uh, we're probably gonna tack on another, I don't know, $1,000 a month for random stuff. So then we get to $21,000 a month is going to be his cost to own this property. But now lenders on the other hand wanna make sure that he's making enough money to be able to sustain these payments. And usually in a property like this, they want to see that uh, he's making mm. about three times his monthly payment for housing. That means Mike Malak uh, has to be making about $63,000, $65,000 a month. That should be easy, right? That should be cake for Mike, right? $60,000 a month, Jules? Easy. That's not easy. I mean, if Tim Dillon is making $200,000, and I always say it's go Tim Dillon, George J. Go Big Mike in terms of who's richest. To be able to afford this property. So let's just say $60,000 a month times 12, $720,000 a year. Now, what I have a feeling is going on is that probably Mike Malak makes uh, way more than $720,000 a year. He probably makes uh, $1.2 million a year. Let's just say $100,000 a month. But he's got expenses. So maybe he's writing off some of his uh, production cost. That's his not his. Things like this that bring his income down. He to, wears uh, three shirts. $20,000 net. That's my guess. He's probably making about $1.1 million a year to be able to afford this property. And uh, yeah, spending almost a year's worth of your income on NFTs after tax. Are you allowed to slit someone's throat if they make a video going over your finances? <laughs> Legally. <laughs> Does that hold up in court? Well, sir, your honor, I killed him because he was going over my finances in a very invasive way. He had his laptop open. He even had a coffee, uh, allowing him to stay up longer looking into my <laughs> private life.
you know, it's gone too far. That's how you know when you've gone too far, when all over the Internet, you've got videos financially documenting every move you've made. Probably not the smartest thing to do. But again, this is just my guess based on uh, the price and his down payment. So the deal went like this. I would lock okay. my board eight. So, yeah, it's, everybody's talking about Big Mike now. I've seen a lot of people making videos about Big Mike. They're finally coming out against him. We wanted to tell Big Mike that we are back. I wonder if Big Mike uh, heard that I was back. You know, because I was hear. the one guy. I've got this one fucking guy. Remember that? Remember that, Stewie? I was the one guy giving him a hard time. I was the one guy giving him a headache. Well, this starts the big summer of love, the summer of Mike.